Hi everyone, welcome to episode eight of Kettlebell Sports Science. What we're gonna be looking at today is how we can best fling the kettlebell upwards to better help our cleans and our snatches. So of course it's no secret that in kettlebell sport what we want to do is perform as many reps as we can in a period of 10 minutes. Now in order to perform the most amount of reps in a period of 10 minutes is to perform the lift as efficiently as possible. And by efficiently I mean using the least amount of energy uh, as possible. The only way to do that is to use physics as our best friend in order to help use momentum and all those other things to make the lift as easy as possible. And for the purposes of today's episode, what we're really gonna be looking at is the best way to fling the kettlebell upwards, either into the rack position for a clean or overhead for a snatch. So now when we're doing a snatch, there's a difference between a snatch that we do in kettlebell sport and what we might see in like somebody's strength and conditioning um, program. So for instance, if we see a swing in somebody's strength and conditioning program, we might see something more explosive, such as Now, of course, this is a great, absolutely great move in a strength and conditioning program in order to train explosiveness, uh, hip drive, all those other things. I use it myself with a lot of my patients. However, that's not an efficient way to go about it if we're doing it in the sport fashion. So, um, what we wanna do is, if we're doing, say, a swing to practice the, uh, how we can better use this more efficiently, what we're gonna do is it'll look something like this. So we see a number of different things. One, we're actually gonna have this rocking motion here by the knees. So as we're coming lower here, we're dipping down then as the kettlebells make, as your arms make contact with your thighs here, we're, we're partly slowing down the kettlebells here, but we're continuing going here and essentially coming up this way. Then once we get to the, uh, the top of this position here, then we lower back and then we propel forward. So as we're coming down, dip, the knees and rock back, then rock forward. The second part that I wanna look at is the hip drive or the pushing of the pelvis forward during this portion here. So, well, I see sometimes when people are doing snatches or cleans, they get the rocking portion down, but they're missing out on the most benefit for the hip drive component. So what's going on, they're coming here and then the they're at the bottom of the, uh, the, the, this rocking portion here. Now the, arms, the arm has already left your thighs. It's not in contact with it anymore. And then if we're doing a hip drive, it's kind of out here. Then the kettlebell continues upwards. In my opinion, I think we're missing out on a really um, a really good opportunity to even help propel it upwards. So what I would do is when you're here, what we're gonna be doing is actually keep your, your arm in contact with your thigh. So as we go here, you're gonna find that sweet spot to where we come up, we extend the knees, so we get some of that momentum coming upwards, but also, we're thrusting the pelvis forward and we're helping to propel the arm forward. So we're pushing the arm forward in order to help fling it upwards. The idea is we're using the momentum and we're using all of these things in order to help fling the kettlebell upwards with the least amount of muscle force. Because if we're not using this hip drive here, what's gonna happen if we're doing this component and now the arm is out this way, 
we're going to have to use a lot more of our low back in order to help pull this up here and to bring it overhead. Now, over the course of a 10 minute set, this can get super, super tiring for your low back. And you know, we're not using our most efficient muscles that we have in our body, which is our glute max. These muscles are extremely, um, uh, 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 they have a lot of leverage, basically, in your body. So we want to use them uh, to our benefit, essentially. Now, <clears throat> I, I've, I came across this video a little while ago on YouTube. Uh, I can't remember the name of the channel that was hosting it, but it was a demonstration that Ivan Denisov did with regards to um, the snatch and kind of using momentum to propel the kettlebell forward. So if we're looking at the kettlebell this way, so let's say like this is the end of the, this is the kettlebell here. We're trying to bring it all the way overhead, and we only have access to this. So instead of you know doing this nice this quick motion in order to bring it up, what we want to do is nice and slow and flick it up. And you see the most efficient way to flick it up is that we dip it down. So we get that little U shape here. So dip down, momentum is bringing it upwards. We bring it up here, it's weightless. Now we bring it back down and then we flick it back to get momentum to bring it superiorly overhead. So that's one aspect here. Another way that I kind of came up to visualize this, this is extremely crude, I realized that essentially a, a softball wrapped in a TheraBand hooked up to another band. So bear with me. So let's say I'm trying to bring this overhead as efficiently as I can. There's a couple of different things we can do here. So let's say, just for, for argument's sake, that my hand here is my shoulder, the kettlebell is, the, the ball here is the weight, and my arm here will represent my pelvis, okay? So like I mentioned earlier, we're bringing the kettlebell here, making contact with our thigh, bring it back, then dip, then propel forward. What that's gonna look like here, so if we bring it down here, that's what it's gonna kinda look like. So here, so as I come here, it's contacting my pelvis. I'm leaning forward, this part over here, then dipping down and essentially flicking it up this way. So here it is again in slow motion. So without those two components, the, the rocking motion of your knees and your pelvis here, and using momentum to thrust your pelvis forward and then redirect that energy overhead. So that's all for today. Hope you got something out of this video, something for you to work on and really focus on using that hip drive in order to uh, propel the kettlebell upwards. So my name is Dr. Eric St. Tonge. This is Kettlebell Sports Science, episode eight. Um, if you like this video, please like it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. All of those things are really appreciated. And until next week, uh, take care.